So that's me, sitting at my desk monitoring eight children's television channels. It was a job that used to require a lot of technical ability, dexterity, quick thinking and a fine eye for spotting mistakes. Now the job mostly involved waiting for a computer to go wrong and then to go to a backup until the main was turned off and on again. Fortunately though, the job gave me a lot of free time thanks to this chap standing next to me in front of an installation in the Guggenheim, New York. A lot of it was spent travelling. Dom is a philosopher. The first time we met he asked me what I'd do if I was rich. Easy, I said. I'd want to travel and see as many different countries as possible. Why don't you start now, was his reply, which spurred me into using my days off for low-cost flights and youth hostel trips to Europe and beyond. Then, on a six-month round-the-world adventure, I received word that a long-awaited redundancy was being offered from work. I hope you are watching the monitors carefully, as they are now showing images of adventures far away from this dark basement. Here's a close-up of us during a drinking session in Prague. Dom's enthusiasm for intoxication is legendary, and I'm ashamed to say that I enjoyed the challenge of keeping up with him. Alcohol has never let me down. It's a constant source of support, he would exclaim. To ease frustrations at work, there seemed to be nothing better than the human equivalent of a computer restart than binge drinking. The commuting to work became less arduous as I realised I could replace the non-place offered by public transport by a 40 minute walk through parks and monuments. It was the documentation of this journey that formed my first investigations on the MA. This walk was something I wanted to document as it was the only part of my working day that I would miss. I am very interested in art that can be classified as immersive and self-reflexive. I wanted to surround the viewer by different views of the same journey. I started making short films using different techniques and technologies such as video glasses, digital cameras and audio recorders in order to create a large video installation. As my films employed more elaborate devices such as cameras filmed in four directions from the platform of a wheelchair and stripped back versions where just the shops on one side of a street in London were photographed, a much larger part of my life was about to be exposed for exploration. Every future moment only has a value if it can be held as mm -hmm. some hideous past moment. Mm -hmm. What baggage! Yeah. What a lot of stuff! Oh, you should see. You I, mean, should I mean, see my I mean, that sounds like yeah. an albatross. Yeah. You know, that is an albatross around your neck. Yeah. To me. Mm. How can you travel? How can you be a traveller and have that much baggage? Oh yeah, that's it. Is if I want to do a long-term travel, I've got some serious issues Stuff to, to deal, deal with. with. Yeah. yeah. But do you think I should keep hold of that and use it, or is that something a barrier? That's not You've got to work that out. You've got to work that out. I am a hoarder who wants to travel. A dichotomy I should use in my work. Why can't I let these things go? I gathered some objects together and photographed them. I wrote down my memories of the objects on the back of the photographs as well as printed out information from Google. The picture itself could now replace some of the objects. Although I realised my own memories of the objects did not provide much interest to an outside observer, I started recording myself talking in the loft while discovering them and taking photographs at the same time. I erected shelves in the studio to see if I could create something engaging out of the documentation of sorting out my loft. I couldn't make the films engaging, as the photographs now turned up in the screensavers on my computer, it was reinforced that these objects only meant something to me. Dealing with these hidden objects became an immense frustration and what with working in transmission, failing to be happy with my own work and the pressure of writing pieces that required an understanding of critical texts and concepts, it felt like something was about to give. Then something amazing happened. My job ended. My mind became focused and I started enjoying the academic side of the course and making work that resonated with others. My time of working in a dark room surrounded by computers and monitors had finally come to an end. Or had it? I can't do this. I have no stomach to make a critical piece. There is only one thing I can do. The New York trip was a tonic for the soul, experiencing the world's capital city with my course mates fueled the fires of creativity. As the world became engulfed within the matrix of my research paper, new skills including 16mm filming paved the way for work that could be explored outside the confines of my main practice. An excursion with a course mate led to me to try out an idea I had to create a moving portrait of someone at work. From day one at Maystone's Print Club I was seduced by the manual skills of lino and mono printing. 
It was, however, screen printing that became my obsession, which led me to produce hundreds of images of my beloved Vectrex, the single object that had now become the focus of my work. But I had not till this point produced the one iconic image. I set myself the task of writing a love song to an object, creating a music track from only the sounds of the machine, along with writing the lyrics and producing the accompanying video piece, brought together many skills that had laid dormant for years. I am now working on the final piece of the MA show, trying to refine its visuality and poetics through exploring the use of the vector graphics produced by the Vectrex itself. Alongside this is a video being developed out of a sculptural piece made in response to a text looked at during a theory and writing seminar. This is titled Galaxy Fish 1000. Thanks to Anthony O'Donnell for his guidance into a world where everything could be seen as art. Cheers to Dan Martin for showing me firsthand how great work could be playful and for making me giggle in class through drawing cartoons. Kate Boger deserves eternal thanks for persisting in explaining abstract art and for opening up a wealth of good contacts in Folkestone. And finally, big hugs to Marcelo de Mello, whose passion as an artist and drive to promote his work has driven me to already look at booking gallery space and having my first exhibition. I leave you now with the quote that inspired the Galaxy Fish 1000 piece and which has opened my eyes to the validity of a practice that is rewarding and authentic. Oh blimey, I hope they don't think I've tried to make some sort of pop promo. Everyone you fight And all that is now